Hello, everybody. Thank you very much. Um, I am blown away by some of the faces on this meeting, and I just wanted to share about why I'm here. I am Dawn. I'm a compulsive overeater, and I weigh and measure three meals a day from the gray sheet, write those meals down, call them into my sponsor, another qualified member of this fellowship, and don't eat in between those meals no matter what. And abstinence is the most important thing in my life without exception. And today is day 126 of what I love to say is another miracle. My second go round. It's probably way more than my second go round because it took me a while to get abstinent the first time. And when I was asked to share, I, I shared about a month ago. Um, well, I shared it, I think when I was 92 or 93 days. And um I didn't want to share. I didn't want to share on this meeting either, because one of the things I'm, I'm just kind of learning is that um, humility is the answer to all of my problems today. And it really is. It is a mouthful reprieve, this program, from a habitual pattern of thought, which I unfortunately have learned um, the neural pathways in my brain, um, my reward system is that if I have that extra whatever, then everything will be okay. And I have innocently used that from the time I was probably nine years old. And I am so grateful for some of the faces on this meeting, all of the faces on this meeting, to be honest, because um, coming back was hard. Coming back to this program after having, you know, I can never remember, six years, I think, of back back abstinence and feeling like I didn't belong. And the funny thing is feelings come from thoughts, right? And and that's where they come from. They're not generated of themselves. There's nothing, there's such a thing as a feeling. A feeling comes from our brain and we create it in our body. And um, my thoughts were, you will, don't want me here because this program is only for people who have long-term abstinence. <laughs> but not, the, 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 the funny thing is, is that my my thoughts, those thoughts kept me away and they kept me away from everything in life. Not just a food program. They've kept me away from long-term relationships. They've kept me away from abundance. They've kept me away from everything else because I have a, a terminal case of uniqueness. And if, if I'm hiding and eating or hiding and whatever I choose to abate my thought with in that moment, then I don't have to participate in life. I can just hide. And so um, I'll tell a little bit about my story, uh, but I'll just tell it in a really brief, gentle way. Um, I grew up in a house uh, with people who love with food. <laughs> and they, like me, learned to deal with their habitual patterns of thought and discomfort with eating. And they suffered from long-term problems with health and weight. They started diet programs for themselves their whole life. My mom had pictures on, on the back of it. It was never a date. It was her weight. And I, I, I don't know if it's hereditary because I know that the guys were skinny, um, but I wasn't. And, um, but I do know that it was, uh, it was something that I had in common with my mom. And she went to diet clubs and she brought me at age nine and age 10. And when she had a radical mastectomy when I was 11 and felt she wasn't a woman anymore, you know, and, and I related the way I look to being important, <laughs> the outside, being important rather than the inside. And I learned to, uh, to deal with that case of terminal uniqueness by eating because eating got me attention. It also got me, um, got numbness in that brain of the anxiety and just from just dealing with life and so I got bigger and bigger and bigger and my story of social isolation just got, got more and more complicated I, I layered some other cool habits on top you know I layered men and drinking and you know lots of other cool things to deal with this case of terminal uniqueness that I had and by the time I came to the rooms and other other rooms of our mothership, I was I was four hundred pounds. So I, I was I was very big. I was dying. Um, and someone introduced me to um, another fellowship for relationships, which saved my life. 
And then a very angry fat woman, bless me, um, stomped into my first um, meeting in, in, in the mothership of this fellowship, you know? And they taught me how to, to kind of deal with some of the problems with the stops, but I was still kind of eating things that didn't make much sense to my body. Now, my body isn't unique. But for some reason, weighed and measured food with no carbohydrates and, and like works. Now, if anyone's listening to this and they're thinking to themselves, I don't know if, if that's for me, try it. Because what it did was it, it made sense. It made sense. It like, it's like I went on all these diet programs before and they told me to eat this. And then you can wean yourself off of it. Yeah, I weaned myself off it onto 50 boxes of something and got big and small and big and small and big and small and made the outside of myself so important rather than the inside. So when I got abstinent in, in that fellowship and then eventually stumbled my way here after only losing 100 pounds, still being 170 pounds overweight, um, having a child, deciding that sugar was a really good idea and then binging my way back up to about 320, 330 pounds. Someone told me about gray sheet and I was like, oh no, those women's crazy. You know, they lose their periods. They're, they're the same, you know, but, but it wasn't more insane than the ritualization I was doing around food. You know, that's hilarious. I mean, the crap we do, right? You know, I was going in the morning and having carbohydrates at exactly the same place every day. And my neighbor was like, why do you have to go to there? And in the afternoon, I had the other set of carbohydrates at exactly the same place. I was almost OCD-like because I felt safe with those rituals. And then someone gave me the gift of this program. And they said, it's really simple. I'm going to tell you how to eat. I was like, really? There's a man. I'm going to tell you the amounts and when. And I'm going to give you the safety of a group of, of people around you that do the same thing that you can talk to when you have life stuff that comes up. Wow. Okay, I, I took a while. Yeah, I came in in August. I got abstinent by by um, March. A couple of day ones along the way. And then I was off. You know, it was like I had found home. My life started expanding. Life started changing. I started getting calming down. All of the frenetic stuff that sugar allowed me to do started falling away. I couldn't work as hard, guys. I couldn't strive as hard anymore. I couldn't do, do, do. Because I had to put my food first. And so I started connecting to the feelings inside. And lo and behold, everything went really, really well. And I remember a great shooter, I love her, in New York, that said, this stroke Connecticut, that said to me, you know, be careful because sometimes when everything's going really well, sometimes higher power will throw something your way. So I moved to the location of my dreams, Thatch Cottage in the middle of the countryside. And two months later, I met the man of my dreams didn't realize those dreams were actually nightmares, but it was the man of my dreams. <laughs> and essentially everything within three months fell apart. He controlled my food. He was abusive. He was narcissistic. He closed down every single thing in my life. I, my life was threatened on a regular basis and his life was threatened for a very long time. So 18 months later of being cut off from the whole world, I let go of my program. I let go of everything. And the problem is, is that I was a strong, confident grace eater. And this is what I'm saying to everyone that's listening to this, is it wasn't about the relationship. It was about the fact that I was willing to make someone else my higher power, to take over my food, to take over every bit of my life, because I thought that's what I was worth. And it was like my life exploded. I went from, I had never dated really. I met, married the first man I met, you know, moved to England, whatever. You know, I'd never dated from the time I divorced that man in 2007 until I met this person in 2019. Fellowship had kept me safe and hidden. And then all of a sudden it just exploded. And the beautiful thing was, is all the way along that journey of a severe dysfunction i'm talking drug abuse regular suicide attempts in my house you know really dangerous police being called you know i mean chaos very quickly and then a global lockdown you're stuck in the house with someone who certifiably literally had a psychiatrist insane um thought it was a brilliant idea nothing wrong with dual diagnosis i'm just not qualified to deal with it i'm not his counselor i'm not his therapist 
and all along the way, I tried to be, I tried to kind of have one foot in and, you know, I, I went out and came back and, and then all of a sudden he just, it went completely gone and my life just went to nothing. And I started to eat, not a lot, but a little. And I understand why people eat. I understand why. I understand that whether it's doing it, but it's that thinking, that one thought that we can't, that, that everything will be better if we have X. And because God, higher power, spirit is stronger than anything else, I had a miracle happen. He told me I was insane and I needed to see a psychiatrist. So I did. I found a coach and she pointed me in the direction of innate health. And that was in July of 20. And I, it was actually July of 2019. It took a whole year and a half for me to leave him whole year and a half for him to actually kind of implode but in November of last year the most wonderful thing that ever had happened and I'm going to describe it in detail because this is how bad it was it was my 46th birthday I was on a beach in Devon I hadn't seen the man for two months because he left my house in September there had been multiple suicide attempts and I had committed him to a psychiatric institution multiple times thank you Sharon five minutes left thank you and what happened was I was on a beach in Devon and he could not go two hours with doing heroin. I didn't realize he was a heroin addict. He couldn't go two hours with me. And something inside of me screamed and said, you are worth more than this. You are worth more than this. And I ended it. And 10 days later, all the stuff was gone from my house. And it took me six months from that point, actually longer than that, November to June of this year, to come back to Gray Sheet. And that's because of all the stuff I made up about you guys, about what you think about me, about how even though I had spoken to people, even on this meeting, about the dysfunction in that relationship, about the fact that I'm a coach and I help people with things like this, I could not see that I was being abused. Because of course I wouldn't be able to. So in June of this year, I heard this still small voice inside of me. And it said, call your sponsor. And I said, oh, God, no, she's not going to want to speak to me. I, you know, I really, and I, I was nasty when I was leaving her. And all of a sudden, I called her up and I said, I need help. And she said, wait and measure a meal and call me tomorrow. We should measure that meal and called her the next day. And I've been abstinent ever since. And I'm now working. And I'm now expanding my business and I'm now putting my abstinence first and I'm glowing and I'm growing and I'm humble and I don't wish this what happened to me on anyone but I truly believe that relapse was made for me it was made for me to learn about this bit of my life that I was willing to put someone else before my health this bit had to be recycled, this little bit. My brother also has mental health problems. Ever since this has happened, I have no problem dealing with him because I know how to set boundaries. You know, I now put areas of my life first that I didn't do before I relapsed. Relapse has taught me humility, quiet, and I need my oxygen mask first. I'm not sponsoring now on purpose because I need my training wheels on for a long period of time before I feel safe again. And so when I'm sharing with you all, I'm sharing with you all from a place of, I didn't want this to happen, but it's my story. And this morning I was crying on the phone going with my sponsor going, I don't want to share that meeting, man. You know, everybody's got so much abstinence and I just feel like such a failure. And she said, Dawn, she said, um, there are hundreds of thousands of stories in Grace Sheet and this is just yours. This is just yours. It's no less or more valid than anyone else's. But maybe by sharing yours, someone will have the strength to leave an abusive relationship. Someone will have the strength to put their abstinence first. And I have a beautiful 10-year-old child who is now being moved off of sugary food, not because of anything I did, because she's making the choice. Because her teeth are quite bad. I don't need to shame myself. I've released, I don't know, how probably about... Hmm, 25 30 pounds very slowly and still coming off i probably put about 50 or 60 on but most of all the relationship i have with my higher power 
is one of absolute, total, and complete understanding that it can never be anyone else. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be one of those unique people that like, not only can I not eat sugar, but I should like stay away from relationships <laughs> because I really struggle with them. Um, but just for today, I don't have to solve that. Just for today, I just have to weigh and measure each meal. And just for today, without exception, this is the most important thing in my life. And because of it, I have a life. People don't even question. They just like, oh, that's what Don does with their food, you know, whatever. And so much simpler, man. Just whacking stuff in a box and going to work every day. Not worrying about restaurants. Save so much money. And no confusion. Gray sheets, weighed and measured. Really simple. Total solution. Seriously, it's like, like everybody should know about this. Because it really is simple. You don't have to think about anything. And the last thing I'll say, and this is the last thing, is I, re I really admire someone called Steve Jobs. I don't know if you guys know him, an Apple founder, and also Einstein. And those two people, they would only have, they only had two or three changes of clothes in their wardrobe because they didn't want to have to make any decisions in a day. They just didn't. It was decision fatigue. And they determined that if they don't have to make any decisions, everything's going to be okay. That's what Gray Sheet does. It takes away all independent food decisions from me, and life's really simple. And I don't know if this is always going to be the solution to me for me, but I know today, today, it is so the solution for me. And I just want to reach out and say, I put my name in the chat. Thank you so much, Sharon. And if anybody is thinking they can't get abstinent, they have so much shame, please reach out because you're not alone. And you are welcome here, no matter how many days you have. Thank you.